Well, you know, the way our users describe Pinterest is kind of a catalog of ideas. They use it to figure out what do they want to eat, uh, what do they want to wear, what do they want their home to look like. Um, and so Pinterest is a little bit unique amongst a lot of platforms because people are there specifically to find ideas uh, that they can do in their everyday life. So who do you consider your biggest competition and what are you doing to stay ahead of them? Well, you know, in some ways the biggest competition is we are always fighting for people's time. I mean, there's so many entertaining things that you can do on your phone. You can play games, uh, you can use social media sites. Um, so the way that we compete is we try to get really good at giving you specific ideas that you can actually do in your regular life. But in terms of advertising dollars, what can you give brands that's different than being on a Facebook or Google, which are really considered the two behemoths in the digital space? Well, I think two things. Uh, the first is like we can give them an audience of people that are there specifically looking for an idea out there in the future. So these are people that may not know exactly what they're looking for, but they have some inkling. And so you reach people that are really open-minded. Uh, and then second, I think unlike a lot of social platforms, since people are there looking for ideas and not to talk with their friends, um, brands can be a lot more themselves. They don't have to pretend to be like your best friend. Um, they can just say, here are the goods and services we offer, and it fits in really naturally into the platform. So your sole revenue stream right now is advertising revenue, promoted pins. Sometimes it's in the form of video, sometimes just regular uh, posts effectively. But you also have a lot of e-commerce that's happening on the site. When are you going to start taking a cut of that e-commerce revenue? Well, you know, the reason we built e-commerce was actually just to help our users out. You know, our users told us that nothing is more frustrating than finding something you want to buy and then not being able to actually go out and get it. Uh, and our philosophy has always been that if we make that behavior valuable, that value will flow into the advertising product. So we don't want to do anything to restrict or discourage people from adding e-commerce inventory, um, but we believe if people are there buying, that'll make the advertising products we have that much more valuable. So the e-commerce is really just about driving more ad revenue. What are other potential ways you could generate revenue as a business? Well, we're really focused on advertising as our core business, um, but we see a lot of different forms that advertising might take. So we've introduced things like video ads, and what's special about Pinterest video ads is you have the option to attach specific products or services. Uh, we have app install ads, like a lot of different platforms. And so we're really innovating on two fronts. We're trying to make it easier to target people that are really actively, open-mindedly looking for things. And then we're trying to build better tools to let brands and companies tell their story. And how do you reassure brands and companies that their ad dollars are really working on Pinterest? That's the, that's the million dollar question. I mean, we've invested really um, in making sure that they have measurement and they can understand, you know, is Pinterest driving sales online and is it driving awareness and sales offline? So that's been a big focus for the team this year. It's going to be a big focus going forward. You announced about 100 million users about a year ago. I don't know if you could update those user numbers now or give us a sense of how big the potential is for Pinterest. Are you going to top out at 300 million users like Twitter has or do you have the potential to be as big as a Facebook? Well, you know, when I think of the service that Pinterest provides, it feels like a service everyone can use. Like everyone thinks about, where do I want to go on vacation? What do I want to wear? What is my home going to look like? What am I going to eat? So we think of those as really universal services. Um, and this year, especially, we've been focused on growing internationally. So we've been focused a lot on Western Europe, uh, Brazil, Japan. Uh, and a big milestone for us that we announced earlier was there are now more users outside of the U.S. Uh, than there are inside the U.S. Your valuation is about $11 billion as of your last fundraising round. When are you planning to go public? And do you think you'll be able to go at a higher valuation than $11 billion? Well, right now, we don't have any immediate plans to go public. Um, we're really just focused on building a sustainable business. And we've been really fortunate. Uh, we're well capitalized um, and we're generating revenue. So I feel like if we focus on building a good business, hopefully the rest will take care of itself. Looking at what's going on in the public markets, there's some big success stories with IPOs, but it's been a, a quiet year for IPOs. What's your outlook? Do you, do you think that's the path or do you think it'll eventually sell? No, I mean, I think that we really want to have an independent company, but I don't know. I don't have any better insight than anyone else. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the eye right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.